Welcome to sunny southern Germany. Today we're doing a workshop tour. Let's get into it. So like I said, we're here in South Germany in Stuttgart and this is my workshop. I'm here for about a year and a half now, close to two years, something like that. So the workshop's not really complete, but it's, uh, I feel like, a good point in time that we can do a little status update. So you can see what's going on and then maybe I can also watch this in a couple of years and see where I was. The previous owner of this place was a painter, not the uh, not the Picasso kind, but the, the walls and, and buildings kind. So here we're in the in the workshop building and behind me, so this wall here is shared with the house. When I moved in here, this place was completely disgusting and dirty and just bah, still disgusting. It's just a different kind of disgusting. So the house which is back there, is here since 1901, so it's managed to survive both world wars. This area here is um, a big manufacturing area. There's Daimler right over there, and there's a whole bunch of small companies that make tooling and tools and all kinds of things around automotive, also around um, tools for woodworking, for metal metalworking. And in the Second War, this area was heavily bombed, so most of the city of Stuttgart was actually destroyed. Somehow the house survived. This workshop here has been here since 1970 roundabout, so this is the third workshop that's on this piece of land. And now I'm here. So what I want to do, let's just have a walk around the shop, look at all the little interesting bits and bobs around and have a little chat. Let's get into it. That's how it looks when you walk in. I've got all the tools up on the wall here. A lot of this stuff I got actually one big buy of, uh, of items that I found actually on the Kleinanzeige and it's like the American Craigslist. A lot of these things I brought from America. Some of them I also bought here. So like most of this stuff, it's all from Mac. Mac. The old craftsman. I think these were still the good ones. So these are quite old. This isn't the China shit that they release now. These, however, these are Still, I think, made in USA. Yeah, but they're complete shit. Up on this wall, we've got measurement stuff. The Stanley, this is the Stanley Proto adjustable wrenches. I've got all the different sizes, two sets of them. Those things are awesome. Then we've got some um, tap and die holders here. Files, some pipe wrenches, other little miscellaneous stuff the not nice chisels now they're slowly getting nice i'm working on sharpening them hollow ground and sharpened and i think it looks pretty cool then i've got this one actually i got this one from paris from a second hand shop it's a goldberg 30 millimeters so goldberg was this uh, french guy from alsace originally so it's this region that's shared or was shared between germany and france and he opened this company, this Goldberg in um, Saverne, it's a region in France, not so far from here. Then we've got these nifty little things. They're kind of hex, hex keys, not hex keys, what are those called? Sockets? Sockets? They're actually kind of cool, so they have a little spot for a wrench here and some wrench flats, so you can put a little bit more torque in there. I don't really use them that much though. Down there's some pry bars, a couple of them are upstairs at the moment. These little hex key screwdriver things pretty cool uh, measurements so engineer squares some um, all kinds of measurement things there then on this saw a little bit saws i don't do so much with hand saws so i don't have so many of them this wall is like the the rest let's call it that that's my tig welder um, it's from the company ewm it's a company from um, rheinland Pfalz. it's a kind of west Germany, northwest from here. Um, it's a 200 amp DC TIG machine. It's an inverter machine, high frequency start, all the good stuff. Would be great if it had AC as well, but I mean, first I don't do so much aluminum and it's like five times the price, so just fuck it. I've got the 3M speed glass, which I scratched the shit out of like the third day I bought it. Yeah. Uh, not much else to say about it. I need a table for it. So I've been welding on my wooden 
main workbench there. It works because it's TIG, so it doesn't splatter everywhere and start stuff on fire. But next, joints are planar. So this is the German brand Schepach. It's the HM0 Solo. So there was um, three of these machines made. There was the HM0, the HM1, and the HM2. 1981. It's an entry-level machine. Yeah. So tables, they're not of cast iron. They're from sheet steel. So this is probably, I would say, four millimeter sheet steel, which is then bent into the shape, welded, and then flattened. What I'm doing in here, it works totally fine. So I got this from a guy. I think I paid like 200 bucks for it. It was quite cheap. I had to change one of the, the power feed rollers in there. I had to change the belt for the power feed, and that's it, and it works great. Um, and I had to build the fence, so the fence was missing. For the um, dust extraction, built this little interface from uh, when you have it in the planar mode. You put this piece on top and then you can connect the uh, vacuum here. So this has got two blades, 23 centimeters you can do. Maybe a bit more because this wood is on top, so I guess it's probably 24 centimeters. This is the adjustment for the table of the planer, which is here. You can set the height when you have it in the planer mode. I've got it on wheels, so when I need it, I just wheel it out here, use it here, and then put it back. I have stalled it before, so if you put a pretty wide hardwood board through the planer, it's possible to stall it if you take too deep of a cut, which is annoying, so machines that stall are really... Yeah, 200 bucks, can't complain. This piece of crap here, this is a Chinese import uh, rebranded Haga. I have no idea. I guess it's a importer of Chinese crap here in Germany. This thing is from, it looks like 1998. Yeah. And it was here. It was abandoned here in the shop when the last guy left. It was all rusty and kind of broken. I fixed it up a little bit, put a different chuck on it. So Albrecht, Germany, zero to 10 millimeter chuck. Really nice chuck, way nicer than the machine. I use it normally in combination with that when I have some drilling operations, so for example, drilling there and then countersinking here, or if I have uh, zero to three mil bits because that one's got a chuck that starts on three mil. So I built this little stand out of uh, junk that I found in the street. So it was, I think it was just old tables. I cut them up, re-welded it into this thing, and now it's got a little stand. Here I've got the little clamping blocks. So moving over here, the Metabo grinder. This I got from some woman not so far from here. It's a type you won't focus, you piece of shit. 706W. It's old. It's great. It's on this really big, heavy uh, steel post with rubber feet on the bottom. And it's like, listen to it. Nice. Got myself a little dressing stone. Then we can come to this monster here. This is Flot right here out of Stuttgart. Yeah, sold by Han and Kolb back in the day. So this thing is a um, drill press. Info if you want to know about the type. I got this from a guy in Fotsheim, which is maybe 30 minutes to the west of here. I got this chuck from a different guy. It's a room, also a German chuck, so 3 to 16 millimeter. Put this chuck on there. Then I put the VFD on there, which I did a video about. You can look at it if you're interested. I've got the belt up here set on the highest torque setting here, and then I just control the speed with the VFD. Works great. My only complaint about this machine is that this um, column could be like 10 centimeters longer because somehow I always get into this situation that this lower platen is too low to drill whatever I'm drilling here, and this one doesn't go down far enough. Such is the life. And when I wired it, I put this original switch, which used to just switch the motor on. This was a three-phase machine before. I've got this switch to switch on the VFD, which is pretty cool that you can still use the old switch because it has a really nice, uh, nice mechanical action. The stand I also built out of garbage. This one didn't turn out as nice as the, the other one for the small drill, in my opinion. But, you know, these things, they get built and then it just stays there. Uh, moving on. 
electronics bench. I did a video on that. You can look at it up in the corner there. We've got power supply, various electronic hand tools, some little components, zip ties, pokey things, cables, etc. Here on the side, I keep all the taps just next to, next to the drills. Got dies down here. I'm selling this long taps, dies, counter, counter bore bits if you would focus, so stuff like that lives in there. On top I've got the drills, various little parts, sorting bins. Got a box of drill bits. If I break a drill, I can just find a new one in this box, resharpen it, and I'm good to go. So that's been nice. Otherwise, on this side I've got um, router bits, Forstner bits, more router bits, masonry bits, screw driving bits, center drills, Marken drills, and these are metric drills. My table saw, so it's a Metabo, I don't know what, Metabo this, I think Metabo, this saw was also released under the Elektra Beckum brand. It's not great. It's, I've never stalled it. I've had the blade all the way up through hardwood. It cuts. It's fine. The angle adjustment is, um, yeah, like they all are with this little handle, then you move the whole thing. It's kind of a piece of crap, but I use my little digital angle readout magnetic block thing here to set the angle, so that doesn't really bother me. On this side, I built in a little router. A lot that can be improved about that, but it's been working, so I haven't really messed with it. This is a, it's the router that I'm using. It's an old one. It's actually from America, so it runs on 120. And there's a transformer for it there. It's loud as hell and the bearings are all fucked, but it still turns. So I still use it. The fence on this is a complete piece of shit, by the way. If there's anything I could do to improve this saw, it's to make this fence on a linear bearing or something here. This is complete garbage. This is my bandsaw. It's a, um, this one is from Elektra Beckum, but this was also, so the same saw was sold by Metabo later, which makes various power tools. It's like your DeWalt or your Stanley or whatever, which is, by the way, if you didn't know, Metabo stands for uh, Metallbohrer, which is a metal drill in German. I got it from a guy used here locally. It's from 1994, so it's around 20, 26 years old. When I bought it, the guy had just changed the tires on both wheels, so the tires were brand new. And since I got it, I got a couple of blades and I also replaced these guides. So this one here on top and the one below. There's a company called Power Tool, Tool Spares, Power Tools Spares, something like that. I don't know, it's a British company. And it's some guy that designed a new blade guide for this saw because the original one is a complete piece of shit if you have the saw you know exactly what i'm talking about they hold on the original guide had three bearings on the top three or and two bearings on the three bearings on the top three bearings on the bottom like normal guides but whoever designed it i think has no idea how bearings worked because the bearing which takes up the load which is coming from pushing the wood into the blade was actually, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. The bearing was like this. And then the two side guide bearings were actually in this orientation. So that somehow makes absolutely no sense to me. Apparently it made also no sense to the guy that made this because, because, ah, why? Why would you do that? It was completely stupid. Anyways, I'll drop a link to this thing below. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just think that it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it was super easy to install. It was like 60 bucks and more so I ended up selling the original guides for like 70 bucks. So actually I came out ahead by making the saw better. Moving right along. Um, this area used to be really, really fucked up. I can post a picture of it if I find one. I don't have so many old pictures of this workshop when I moved in because I was busy you know, moving and dealing with all the crap that was in here. But this area was really fucked up before. There was a huge uh, cast iron sink with actually three of these taps, faucets, whatever. And it was just absolutely disgusting. The, the guy washed his painting stuff here. Under it was a little, 
not a little, it was a big box. It was a kind of decanter, maybe. No, is that the right word? I don't know. It's got like four chambers and the water spills over each one and in the process of spilling over the heavy particulate falls to the bottom so that it doesn't put so much crap into the pipes. And that thing stank of all hell. So I got that out of here first. Then I had to destroy this, most of this wall because all the plaster was falling off because there was some water damage up here. We had to change the, the beam of the house and this was, yeah, just a whole story. Basically all this plaster is new. Um, it's not done yet. Still have some to do over there. Then I tiled this little square. I got this sink from an old animal clinic. Here's a little storage for old planes. There's some really cool stuff in here like this. Uh, oh God, I don't know the name of these things. This kind of thing for cutting um, dados into boards. I don't use them a whole lot, these old planes, but I use a few of them and they're cool to have. I do use the big joints are playing a lot. That thing is nice. So there used to be a tap right here which was totally stupid because it's in the middle of the workshop and it served like no purpose there except putting water all over the floor. So I put this pipe and plumbed it all the way out to over there behind this table. And now there's a tap outside so I can actually water my plants and do, um, do some... You get the point. Here's my nice little garbage tool cart. So this thing, I'll actually put a picture of this up also. This thing is completely made out of garbage. So I found this frame here. Yeah, there were four of them in there. And the last one I built. And then at the scrapyard, I found all these super heavy duty ball bearing slides. Little vice. I got this from a monastery in France. They were closing their workshop and they were selling all of their little what was left in the toolbox i keep uh, this is mostly like car car fixing things the top is full of garbage like every toolbox hex keys torx keys and metric and american um, this drawer is kind of like random crap at the moment some little um uh, what the hell are these things called micrometers there we go micrometers which are also french i got them at a flea market in france for just a couple of bucks it was, it was a machinist and he was selling his stuff because he retired picky things you can never have enough picky things to fix cars or whatever else you're fixing cobalt where's cobalt from cobalt was from home depot lowe's one of those things this thing is great it's a drill guide you put it on a surface you can clamp it or hold it by hand and then drill holes perpendicular to that surface really nice it also has a yeah, you can kind of see it there. So it's got a V groove on the bottom, so you can also put it on pipes and round, round things to drill a hole. Flashlights, extension, stuff like that. So next drawer we got uh, brake line wrenches. Brake lines. These kind of wrenches, it's also craftsman, but these are still the nice ones. Then the good old USA snap-on. So I've got one of these and one of these floppy head ones i've replaced the the drive mechanism in both of them they are fantastic these things are spectacular they are blue point ratchet wrenches really satisfying mechanism sockets random crap taps in this little box that i built a while back um, letter punches some torque wrenches breaker bar um, impact sockets Torque wrench, torque wrench, yeah. Second drawer, we've got a piece of shit socket set that was here in the garage that I can't get myself to throw away. Then we've got these Proxon, so tiny machines, and I think they're used mostly for model building, things like that. But they've also got these, these are the uh, Proxon, and they're actually really nice quality. And so here I've got Torx, security bolts from Daimler or Volkswagen, or if you've ever taken apart a German car, you know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I have no idea what these things are called in English. Hex. Here, um, a half inch SNK socket set. SNK, I think it's actually also a German brand. 
fourth drawer was the electronics drawer. Um, now it's like rest crap. And the fifth drawer is also kind of full of crap. There's um, pullers, bearing pullers, things like that. There's one of those. No, this thing you gotta look at. This thing is awesome. It's a label maker from days gone by. And basically you put your letter that you want to stamp here. Then you push it. Then you move to the next letter, stamp it. And then you get these old school labels that you can stick to stuff. Got a couple of these little blocks big ones little ones this is some little tig stuff cups electrodes etc airbags you ever need to change uh, windows or doors in your house this thing is a lifesaver check it out you where's the little this is a little valve here hold on how does this work I think like that close the little valve then you can pump this up and you can put a bunch of weight on it so they're rated for 300 pounds lift so you can stick them between your, your door or the side of your window, whatever, and then you can pinch it in place with these airbags and then screw it in. Really cool thing. So on the sides here, we got screwdrivers. Then these are the nice screwdrivers. So I have the, the VDE, the electrical isolated ones. Then I've got these hammer ones. Hammer goes all the way through and it's got wrench flats. These are from Vera. It's also a German brand. These things, I really like them. Um, some people complain about this butylene infill here that it kind of gets nasty and chips away. So they kind of start to look like that after a while. There's like little chunks missing here. And I don't know, I, I like these screws. They're really ergonomic. They really sit well in the hand. Very nice to use. Pink gun, Sata Jet, an R95. So this, uh, I spray everything with it. Here for the, the flex, the, what are they called? Angle grinder. The various cutoff wheels and... Now we're in this corner. Box of wood, because who doesn't need a box of wood? Here we've got the air compressors. Blitz. So this thing is actually around about my vintage. It's from 1988. I got this from a, a auto shop locally. They actually bought a, a bigger one, apparently. Apparently this monster wasn't enough for them. It runs on 380, so I had to plumb 380 into here for this thing to work because I thought about putting it on a VFD, but then I decided that it's probably time I got 380 in here. So here is the 380 that I pulled from the fuse box in the house because here in Germany, we get three phase to every house, which is spectacular. This was actually the main workbench of my previous workshop. So I had a space, it was tiny and this was the biggest bench I could fit in there. So I did all of my work on this bench. On this side, I've got all my hammers. My favorite tool, by the way. On this side, I've got some other stuff. So these are the nice chisels. Normally my plane is here and this is a little marking gauge and mallet that I built. There's a pile of garbage here. How do you people of YouTube with spotless shops Whenever you watch the videos, this doesn't exist. What do you do with this? The table, it's two meters 40 in length and 120, 40, 60, I don't remember. It's big. I got these vices, got these also from the, the Kleinanzeigen, got them from some guy around here, he sent me two of them for I think 30 euros. Everything heavy metal, nice mechanism and the only bad thing about these vices is that the drive side there's two of these guides and only one is a drive the other one is just a guide so what happens if you clamp something on this side it the whole thing kind of cantilevers over i've drilled these holes in the vise and also along the entire table so i can clamp long boards to plane them up here consumables cabinets so there's like paint and oils and stuff like that in there storage i don't like this storage because look at it there's some various tools up there that's tool machine boxes so kind of like hand power tools various mixture of stuff so belt sander from bosch router from bosch biscuit jointer from makita hand 
um, plane, power plane from Bosch, piece of shit, jigsaw, um, flex. And then we move over here, so this is like a cheap uh, little mouse sander, nothing exceptional, little nail staple gun. And then these are the Bosch Blue, so this one is new, I actually couldn't find one of these in decent shape used, they're all kind of beaten to hell. So I got this one new, orbital sander, so an eccentric orbital sander, also Bosch Blue, it's the Gex 400, 450, something like that. This thing is incredible, so it has the, the from Festool, you have the Rotex, it's the kind of direct competitor to that, so they have the mode where it's just a vibration eccenter uh, sander, and then there's also a mode where it's uh, eccentric and rotating the whole disc, which is awesome. Just realized that half the workshop is actually upstairs because we're building the terrace at the moment. A little Bosch drill. I'll give this one a solid meh. The, it's about three, three to four years old now. Uh, the gearbox is kind of fucked, but it was kind of fucked already from the factory. So a solid meh. I do like how small and light it is though. Bosch little impact driver. Eh, pretty good. This thing can't complain. Not like an 18 volt Makita, but it's pretty good. It uses these 12 volt batteries. So this one, this one here is one of the older ones that uses this 10.8 volts. They've since retired this battery and moved exclusively to the 12 volt. But the 12 volt charger fits this battery and I can put this battery in that drill and they interchange. I don't know if the 10.8 is really 10.8 or if the 12 is really 12, but they swap between each other and I guess they wouldn't have, I guess they didn't fuck up. They probably thought about that and I guess the voltages are close enough that you can just interchange them. Bosch jigsaw, so down, oops, downstairs was the crappy one. This is the good one. Um, no complaints, it works great. It does have a funky thing though, when you leave it plugged in to the, to the power, even if it's off, one side of it gets hot. So then we have the AEG hand, um, what is this called? Circular saw, hand circular saw, whatever. It's AEG in the Atlas Copco days. Bosch laser, no big complaints about that. This is a Bosch chop saw. Uh, I'll give this one a very, very hard meh. Check this out, for example. There, here's the little tightening thing to lock in the angle. It's got the notches, right? So every denomination, like 0, 15, 22.5, they all have a little notch. So when you move it, it kind of clicks in to those denominations. But then, check this out. If I tighten the little screw, see that? It moves. What the fuck, Bosch? These things I also couldn't find a whole lot of uh, used ones in good shape, so I bought this thing new. It's the, the smaller one, the GCM8. And that's it, yeah. Thanks a lot for joining, and then I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao! -y.